Okay, so there we go. We found a chalk. So, <laughs> here's the chalk. Okay. So this is an important process uh, that you really incarnate. Right. What, one thing that I, I, I found was that um, that if you look at the progression of music historically, mm -hmm. it, it, it almost is mirroring what could happen with eurythmy, but uh -huh. it's not really happening yet. Mm -hmm. I think I'm helping mm -hmm. in other in individuals, your eurythmists like mm -hmm. yourself, yes. you understand this holistic yes. paradigm. For sure. And, you, and you, you, you use this now in your understanding of, of etheric movement, um, is that it took many centuries for um, music theory to become a, a, a language in itself. Yes. You know, I could do. Yeah, and, and you, and have you can something. write that down. Yes. You can write that down. Yeah, yeah. Well, what that means when you write something like that down, you it's a death process. Yeah. So there's death, there's birth, there's a life, there's a death, and there's a resurrection. And now the artist can look at this dead. Transcript piece of music and lift it off and, and, and play it. All, and is the, all it is is a couple of black dots and a piece of paper, it's, which is magic. It's magic. It's totally. like magic, yeah. Totally. So we have to do that with eurythmy. Well, that's what Rudolf Steiner was attempting to do. You see, other, he gave other, the forms. other you know, all the, all the ancient disciplines, the, 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 the martial disciplines, the, uh, all the, the folk dancing disciplines, they've all created ways they can write it down. Dal Crows, um, um, Rudolf Le Bon, uh, the work that's going on with uh, Frey Faust and, and Axis Syllabus, mm -hmm. amazing work. It's all incarnating um, movement, so we, we can kill it. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean in a morbid sense, I mean that it has to die to the paper. Yeah. It has to die to the earth so we can lift it off. Yeah. And so Rudolf Steiner attempted that because he has volumes of, of, of documentation and drawings about our, these archetypal movements mm -hmm. that again, relate to you know speech and music this, yes. this larynx yes really you important can sing organ. and speak singing and speaking and so this you know this this it, 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 once it can hit the earth we can start to listen to its reflection mm -hmm. and then we, then we can have knowledge of how where we're going in the future right now we're just we, we since we don't allow your me to incarnate in an applied way we don't know where we're going with it yeah and yeah. the kids don't like that. Kids need to know where we're going. Mm -hmm. They need to know that that if in their ballet classes, you know, if, if, if they're if they're pointing, you know, they're stretching. They're 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 doing an E. Yeah. You see, it's all related. You know, when they spin around, yeah. you know, they're doing a, a rotational movement. Yeah. They they need to know that that, that uh, kids that are doing Tai Chi, you know, that if that's what they're doing in, in school, that that Tai Chi they can see is related directly to that sound M. Yeah. You see, it's a slow meditative movement, which is very watery. You know, it's very watery, Tai Chi. Or for example, the martial arts, you know, the K, mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm. the Gu, mm -hmm. the strike, mm -hmm. and the block. Mm -hmm. You see, the martial arts are, are, are incarnating that culturally in, into the, the stream of humanity. And we need to be able to see that this speaking and singing is a universal thing. And until we start to bring the rhythm to our training centers, in this applied way. Oh, our education centers. Our, our exact, thank mine. you very much for that. <laughs> in our educational centers, our anthroposophical educational centers, exactly. will we start getting more traction? Because what happens is that it, you really mean in an applied sense, it becomes an inclusive uh, paradigm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's, it's very exclusive. Yeah. Because when I left my training, I'm sorry and to say. And you can only do it inside. <laughs> you can only do it inside with the right shoes on and the right. windows closed. Right, and, right, right. And, and not inhabit the rest of my body. Right. Like, for example, uh, you know, a lot of this is on, on, on my website. Uh, there was a very, uh, a very sweet woman. Her name's uh, Kathy O'Neill. And Kathy uh, was one of my students uh, down at WISC, Waldorf Institute of Southern California. Oh, yes. And so... Um, I go down there once a year with my dear friend Steve Spitalny, who's an early childhood educator, who's very, in the, in the sense, cutting edge on that level. Mm -hmm. And he's, uh, Steve Spitalny and, and Kathy were uh, these, like, two of these individuals who could, uh, you know, see me for who I am, as quirky and as overbearing and, and as uh, I can be. Well, you're, you're, you're trying to bring something new. Uh, yeah, and they, they believed in me, like my, my, friend, my friend Peter. Yeah. And, um, 
And so Steve and I would, would we'll, you know, we go down every year and, we're, and we've been teaching these, these, these seminal, these seminal, uh, um, the beginnings of the beginnings. this new education in Eurythmy. Yeah, it's really exciting because very because there's a real sense that these young teachers they, they're getting it. You know, they understand the need to work holistically. Yes. The need to look at at the um, at, at holism and and which you know which archetypes are we dealing with and have this sensibility and, and, and practice of looking at things that way. Yeah. And so, you know, Kathy was, 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 was uh, generous enough to start a website for me. I haven't worked with it for years because it's been, on, it's been online for years, but I don't know how to, you know, I don't know how to do that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, maybe one day... You need a techie for that. I need a techie for that. But my friend Steve, um, you know, he invites me down every year. And, and I can share these things with, the, with these Waldorf teachers down mm -hmm. at, at the Waldorf Institute of Southern California. And, mm -hmm. and those so there's a beginning there. Those individuals down there, they understand yeah. there is something wrong, deeply wrong with the way Eurythmy is being perpetuated. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's not a bad thing. I, but I, it's a growing pain. It's, I mean, a, it's a growing pain. You know, I mean, any, I mean there hasn't been a, a new art in thousands of years. Well, it's, it's not even this, a new art in a sense. It's just if you want to, if you want to, if you want to take these, these, these universal laws of speech and music and, and use them artistically, mm -hmm. well, dancers do that already. They yeah. just do it intuitively. Yeah. You see? And, but, but we as Eurythmists can, can help to see this connection. Consciously. Because it's all about holism again. Yeah. It's not an abstract thing, uh, what Rudolf Steiner brought. It's just that it's been taken uh, into a, a society of individuals who have been sort of protecting it and been putting it up on a pedestal. Yeah. And separating it away from themselves. Yeah, yeah. And they're not seeing that it's right here. Yeah. It's a very interesting thought that we know more about what's outside of us in the universe, in space. Yeah. And way off of the far distances. Well, I ask people, do you know where your liver is? We did kind of a reversal and I said, do you know where your liver is? There were some people who didn't know where the liver is. Right, but you understand. That, that, that's connected to what I'm just going to, about what I'm going to say. Exactly, is that we, yeah. We know, we know all these things that are out and about uh, yeah. uh, us. But we know very little about what's in the ocean and the Earth's oceans. And again, the Earth is like is a, is a being, and it has a, almost the same ratio of water as we do mm -hmm. in our own bodies. Mm -hmm. And so, when we can, if we can start in an applied way to listen to our water, to our slosh, you see, we, then we, can we will also it. we'll also learn you know, not, tempos. not to put holes in the earth in the ocean so exactly. that oil, the oil like can care come of our out. Water. Oh yes, right, and that's what these oh, yes. forms that Frank Chester is creating. Yeah, it, it's it's uh, it's ennobling and it's rarefying the water again yeah. through, through pure geometry, exactly. pure uh, pure phenomenological yeah. uh, research again, in which in, in in many ways Frank's Frank's work is this connection between the water and the earth. Exactly. It's, yeah. it's, it's phenomenal. It's not, yeah. it's not, you don't have to be scared about that. If you, you know, if you inhabit your lower centers, you're going to, you know, you're going to un unleash a sexual demon. No. It's not going to happen. No, no. In fact, because <laughs> you, 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 you do have an eye. I mean, if you're developing that, you can, yeah. you can do whatever you need to do with it. But what's happening. But the aberrations, the, the sexual aberrations come out of the fact that we haven't, uh, uh, you haven't explored we water. haven't explored it consciously. Yeah. Have not explored our water, and, and there's there's numerous exercises that are being done being, being done anthroposophically, where uh, different teachers will will move. Like there's an exercise I've I've seen done where a person will move towards something, you know, and and, and then they'll 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 stop and mm -hmm. then they'll move away from it, mm -hmm. and they'll move towards something, mm -hmm. and they'll stop and they'll move away from it. But what in in, in this particular uh, example, the instructor. Uh, ask the person to think of, of a stream that's outside of them and that they're in that stream yeah and then connect with that stream yeah and you can do that yeah and that's fine if, but you have to start with inside. with your water <laughs> that you the stream to... is that what, what you're actually feeling is a natural water displacement in your body yeah and then it, and then it, you, you can then you know and then it translates to the because the earth has its own etheric but if you connect with your your, your, your own primal etheric, you have to do that you, first. You'll be able to start connecting to the etheric that's outside of you and not just go outside of yourself like, yeah. like these machines are doing out in the cosmos. Yes, yes. We need to start connecting to our own water and start to harness it. So 
I develop this way where I, in the slosh technique, you know, where, where I can harness my water. Because if I'm putting all this energy to go this direction, mm -hmm. and, 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 and then I stop, the, the, my, the, my water body is going to push me the other way if I just listen to it. Yeah. It'll literally push me. Yeah. And so, I, so an individual can then start to work for long periods of time by using this rhythmic quality of slosh. You see, because they're, they're on the edge of their water. Yeah. Because they're listening to their water. Yeah. And you see it in, in dead shows. You know, when you smoke a joint and you drink some beers and, and you get all loose and gooey. Mm -hmm. See, these people are experiencing their etheric body directly. Yes. They're doing it through the Maybe that's aid. why men drink so much, because they like that. They like that <laughs> feeling of being all sloshy. There you so, go. And you can imagine now, once, once now you understand this idea of the slosh and this watery self of that course. we've been ignoring for so long, you understand you know, the, the drunken monk discipline. Mm -hmm. You see, the drunken monk is, is a discipline where they're, they're, they're just directly working with the, with the watery etheric, mm -hmm. the sloshy etheric. Because mm -hmm. when you're relaxed, then you can, you can be more pliable. And I found this, like, I'm 53 now, and I've never been more flexible in my entire life than okay. now. Yeah. Because I've learned how to relax. Exactly. You can stretch as much as you want, but until yeah. you actually relax your, 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 your watery being, Will you get anywhere in your stretching? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Stretching and, and relaxing are deeply connected. Mm -hmm. Well, I learned, I learned uh, myself uh, that um, uh, falling is a good idea. I, I, I kept falling uh, when I was doing arrhythmia training. Mm -hmm. And just outside, just falling over something. Oh, right, being clumsy. Yeah, yeah well, you know, just falling <laughs> okay. down. But, but uh, I love falling. Same here. You know, That's because you, you get into the physical. I mean, it, right. it's not a problem. That's right. Yeah, yeah. You have to know how to fall. You have to know, you know? how to fall. I mean, well, here's something. A, a, a side note. Um, so, so we, 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 do you want to go into the five vowels? It would be a good idea, but we'll have a break first. I okay. Think. All right. So now we're going to get into what the physical part of the physical. Right, exactly. <laughs> so, what's the physical part of the? Um, well, there's two things I, can, I wanted to show you uh, with regards to the human skeleton. Okay, and here's the human skeleton. There we go. Yeah. So what I have part here, of I, it. I have an arm mm -hmm. and a leg. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you can see that they're 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 you know they're very distinctly they're parallels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's missing here is the hip. Mm -hmm. And, and what's missing up here is the collarbone oh, and the shoulder blade. Right, right. And mm -hmm. as you know, as above, so below, right? Yes, so, so you have it there and there. Right, so and you have it also, it's also in, the, in our head, our, our jaw is our limbs. Mm -hmm. You know, so you, you'll have, you know, you'll have this similar structures that's metamorphosed into our head. Yeah. So our, our hips is, is all basically our, the rest of our head. Right. And our shoulder blades, I mean, yeah, our collarbone, our collarbone and shoulder blades is, is the hip of the middle system. Yeah. And then our hips proper are, you know, we know as hips. Mm hmm And these are just metamorphosed in different areas, these threefold areas. Exactly. And in this way, we're talking about threefoldness. So, yeah. you know, there's a different archetype operative here. Yeah. Uh, right. Like so when, I was, when I was talking about here, I was talking about a fourfold paradigm. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With, with, the, with regards to eurythmy and applied eurythmy right. and mm -hmm. you can mm -hmm. almost uh, you can almost say that that this fourfold paradigm uh -huh. that what lives in the in the in between space yeah is thinking feeling, feeling and, and will. willing right you see it's it's the fourfold paradigm that that creates the 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 vessel for the soul to, to live in this in between space exactly and we okay. know that in you know, our study in eurythmy that uh, that the soul, or, or that the interval, the musical interval, is something that you feel, as opposed to the tone itself, is something that you hear and you, and you, and you experience with your senses. But it's, it's our feeling life that that um, that can that that senses the the differences in in tones, mm -hmm. which is the interval space, because mm -hmm. really the soul of music is in the interval. In other words, when uh, in other words, this in the silence is the most activity. Yes, in Inter between. interactivity. 
Exactly, in the activity. Right. Yeah. yeah. And you have that with, uh, you could even break down the intervals themselves into harmonic and uh, melodic intervals, where you can see again there's a, there's a duality going on where the harmonic intervals have to do more with, with, uh, with um, space. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in music theory, you know, or in, in music, yeah, music theory, you, you, when you have a chord, you have these you know you have three chords yes that create, that three tones that create yes. a chord yeah and and the and the relationship between or the space in between is what determines whether it's you know major minor augmented diminished chords or not but that happens all at once yeah and it happens in space yes whereas the melodic interval goes over a course of time and, and it's it sort of like connects yeah and so there's always this duality that's always arising in everything that that we're doing mm -hmm. so we have to be able to look at, at you know are we talking more with regards to space or time or you know um you know tone or interval right right and that's always happening you know mm -hmm. so it's important to know that that that's that kind of thing is always operative and between you and between the bones you have an interval <laughs> right so um so in in um in your rhythm Rudolf Steiner talks about how uh, the different intervals relate to uh, the seven, eight, seven intervals and eight tones that create the scale, you know, from C to C. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's, it's imprinted in our bones, he talks mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. So, excuse me. Oh, it's a bubbly water. Um, mm -hmm. So, so what, what Steiner uh, starts to describe in the tone rhythm lectures, Mm -hmm. He starts to, to describe how the collarbone and, and the, um, the shoulder blade mm -hmm. are related to the prime. Right. To the first interval. And, and if you think about that with regards to our legs, which is, you know, the other parallel to this, mm -hmm. right? We're on our hips. Yeah. So spatially, where if I were just to inhabit my hips, I, I could only really just kind of shuffle around if I'm trying to inhabit and, and, and move from my hips alone. You see what yes. I'm saying? Yes. It would just yes. be a sort of this, this kind of shifting kind of movement. Yeah. And hence Rudolf Steiner gives us a form principle for the for the prime or the first interval. Mm -hmm. That's just a very small curve. And, mm -hmm. and if you're a eurythmist, you would, if you were trying to show the audience that they're hearing that you're now in, in the prime or you're in the home tone mm -hmm. or the key that, that you know the key signature mm -hmm. that a piece of music is written in. You would be you would be you moving really slow because you're inhabiting your hips, and you make this little little scallop form. Mm -hmm. He shows, mm -hmm. and then he shows the next form, which is a little bigger. Uh huh. It's a bigger scallop, mm -hmm. and then he talks about in the tone your rhythm lectures how it has to do with this bone. Okay. And then you'll see the eurythmist. If you've ever seen a eurythmic performance, then you'll you'll see they 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 do this. Mm hmm. And what, what they're doing is they're bringing that bone into movement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All this is just sort of just hanging there. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to get you as, as, as a rhythm performer to see this bone. Yeah. And so they're showing you that bone yeah. by, by bringing it into movement. And so when you yeah. have like a series of, of, of seconds, you know, you know, mm -hmm. da, 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 they're going, you know, da, 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 and they're showing you this bone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because really what can I mean, you, you see the hand, but it's really... But they're really, really trying to show you this bone, this bone. movement. Yeah, yeah. And then hence... Hence, formative-wise, yeah. they're inhabiting this bone. Yes. You see, so then they have a little more mobility. Yeah. And so. In other words, the consciousness of that particular bone has to be there when you do the second. Y you can do that. There's yeah. lots of ways you can you can show this. Yeah. But I'm bringing it all together, so he gets a bigger scale because if you were to inhabit these bones, mm -hmm. you see, no, I can actually, you know, I can, I can actually get somewhere. Yeah. And he's showing this yeah. bigger, this bigger scale. Yeah. Yeah. And the arrhythmist is, is, is showing a book. What could be more objective than showing your bones? Yeah, yeah. You see? So, and then he says the third interval has to do with these two bones. Uh huh. And you see, there's two of them, and, and he, uh, Rudolf Steiner describes these as the major and minor third. Yes. And this is how we, we build chords mm -hmm. using a major and minor third. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, what does he do? He makes a bigger scallop. Mm hmm. Because you know, and then, then you'll see the, the rhythmists in the performance, they're, they're doing this. Yeah. And they're not really inhabiting their hands, it's just kind of there, but you see they're bringing these bones into movement. Yeah. It's different than this, but lifting. Yeah. So it's kind of a lifting gesture. Yeah. And this is this, because now you can, you see now I'm in these, and you see now I'm in you these can, bones. You can also do it in the, in the